For Facebook and Google games, I searched for video game websites. Most were fine, but but an experience with one particular website ruined going on random sites for games. I'm a girl who loves playing a variety of games, be it shooting zombies, puzzle games, or word games. After searching for a game site, I found one. I'd rather not say the name of the site, but be aware of it, for it's a bad site. At first I had fun with the random games, playing many. One day I found an area of the site that had videos and pictures. Curious, I tried the pictures tab. A pop-up suddenly appeared, asking me to turn off my pop-up blocker, to view the pictures and video tabs. Stupidly, I turned off my pop-up blocker. The photos began with cute animals and then became weird. I began to see pictures of deformed and disfigured people in various poses, each weirder and creepier than the last one. The last scared the hell out of me. It was a picture of someone in a dark room. It was a woman with a bruised and beaten face. Suddenly, it became a video of the face doing a time lapse of it rotting away. It suddenly seemed to look at the camera, and out came a loud shriek before it became a scold. The picture tab suddenly disappeared, and I was shaken. Recovering, I went to the video tab. What I saw made me regret clicking on the site. The screen became black until the words game one appeared. I saw what looked like a video game play of the shooting games on the site. It looked like one of my favorite zombie shooting games. At first it was fun, then something caught my eye. One zombie was removing its mask before dying, revealing a real person. All the zombies on the ground were real people riddled with bullets. The screen went black, showing the words, next game, burger restaurant. The video was of a restaurant setting. Three people were in the kitchen. It was two men prepping burgers and milkshakes. One woman, she was frying fries. Suddenly the man who looked like the boss appeared. The conversation went like this. First, he approached the man that was making burgers. From the manager, it says, a customer complained his burgers were overcooked. From the guy making the burgers. Sorry boss, I'll fix it. The manager, let me show you how to cook a burger. He suddenly grabbed the man by the back of his neck, and he shoved his face against the steaming hot grill. The poor guy screamed loudly, but the manager kept his grip. Finally, he pulled up the man, revealing a face that was badly burned. The manager, I'm gonna overcook the burgers again. Now get back to work. Seeing enough, I tried to exit the website. To my horror, it was frozen. I couldn't even move the mouse anymore. Then the manager approached the woman making fries. The manager, Aren't those fries done yet? The woman. One more minute, boss. As he now grabbed her, I know what was about to happen. So I looked away, covering my eyes. As I heard a loud, hissing, bubbling noise, I realized I'd forgotten to remove my headphones. I practically threw them off, but accidentally I saw the screen. He had dunked her entire head into the deep fryer. He was holding her as she struggled. She struggled fiercely. Finally, he began to pull her up, and I had to look away. The screen suddenly said, Don't look away now. Wait until you see the video of the milkshake maker. It'll be funny. Fed up and a little nauseous, I went under my table and unplugged the computer. The screen became black, no sounds. Throwing caution to the wind, I plugged it back in. The site was gone. What type of site did I go into? And I think it rerouted me somewhere that I didn't want to go to. My friends told me it was a deep web or dark web. I couldn't find it again. I had to remove two viruses off the computer and set it back three weeks to get working again. I never explored the video game sites again after that. The only thing I wonder is, what would have happened if I stayed and watched? Above all else, I wonder if the victims or anyone else were ever found. Do yourselves a favor. If you want to play games on your computer, go only on sites that you know. Otherwise, who knows what you'll find if you dig deep enough. I had just started a summer job where I was a custodian cleaning classrooms in preparation for the upcoming school year. My dad worked for the town's district, 
to get me this job. I was the youngest one in there. I was 20 years old at the time. And there were a handful of people that worked with me. They were usually off doing other tasks like waxing the floors and covering up foul writing on the walls with paint. The schools were empty besides the staff who was cleaning. Things were going fine for the first couple of weeks. Mostly, I was on my own wiping down desks and dusting while listening to music. It was nice and I enjoyed not having someone on my ass all day telling me what to do. After I had finished cleaning the middle school, the head custodian had sent me another woman. We'll call her Karen, who was my co-worker, to go start cleaning the high school. She was a slacker who'd often go out and smoke cigarettes, but was really a nice lady. She didn't care what I did and was always off doing whatever she wanted, so yeah, basically I was alone. Again, I didn't mind because I liked the freedom, but I was taking up the bulk of the work. A few days had gone by and I finished cleaning a couple of hallways. It was time to move to the basement where the robotics and the woodworking classes were. I didn't think anything of it until I got down there. I noticed light was peeking through under the doorway of my classroom. The windows of the class were covered with shades. I found this really odd since it was the summer and no one was in the building besides Karen and I. I walked over and I peeked in the door window. The lamp was on the desk, but no one was inside. I proceeded to knock, no answer. After turning the knob, I realized the door was locked, so I used my key to open the door. A musty smell flooded my nose, and I decided to scope out the room. Maybe someone had forgotten to turn the lamp off. I disregarded that idea when I noticed the computer at the teacher's desk was on also. The screen looked weird. I'd never seen this layout before. The website was all black and with red writing on it. It also had a chat box. I didn't have time to read the chat because a sudden voice came from the doorway. Can I help you? It was a man, maybe in his early 40s, about six feet. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm just cleaning the classrooms and I didn't know if anyone was in here. I said in an embarrassed tone. Ah, uh, so I see. Well, I appreciate that and don't worry about it because I'm in here. I'm, uh, I'm working on a few things, so sawdust is going to get everywhere again after you guys clean up. Anyway, so go ahead. He said this in a very strange way, like he was hiding something. He walked over and he sat at his desk while closing the browser. Okay, no problem. I then proceeded to the door. Wait, can I ask you a favor? He said in a delirious way. Uh, yeah, sure. I didn't really know what he was about to ask and I couldn't find myself to say no. I just wanted to get out of there, as I was already creeped out. He said, I have this uh, petition. It's to get more funding for extracurricular classes, like art and woodworking. He sounded so uncertain as if he made that up right on the spot, right out of the thin air. I said, uh, sure. I paused for a moment when he handed me the paper. It only had two other names on it. The petition required a full name, phone number, email, and address. I immediately felt uncomfortable, but I didn't know how to decline it, so I just added my information. Thank you so much, dear. You have beautiful bone structure, by the way. He said in such a creepy way. Uh, thanks. I grabbed my cleaning supplies and I, I sped out of there. After that experience, I didn't really put much thought into it. Yes, he was creepy, but... I didn't really have much evidence to persuade myself that he was out to get me or something until I started running into him throughout the school. It became pretty frequent. It's as though he was watching me and I was concerned. I dismissed it because he just smiled at me or waved as if I saw him. Maybe I was overreacting. I mean, he was a teacher after all. Still, my gut feeling was telling me something wasn't right. Weeks went on and I started to notice him less and less. I only had a few more weeks at this job and then back to college I go. One day, the boss let everyone out early since it was almost 100 degrees. I got home and I decided to hang out with some friends. It was a group of us, about five or six. My boyfriend's brother joined us at this time, which was unusual since he's not really a social person. He's really into technology, so he's always on a computer, which he built himself. He's also good at hacking and stuff like that. So anyways, that day he told me he needed to talk to me and it was serious. I was concerned because we weren't close, so it must have been something legit. 
He brought me into my friend's living room and pulled out his laptop. To my surprise, he was on the deep web. So, you're up for a bid on the deep web? He hesitated. Wait, what? I knew how the deep web worked. I would often listen to horror stories, but I've never been on it, so how would my info even be out there? It suddenly clicked. The web page matched the one I saw in the classroom a month back. I had also given my info to that guy. My heart felt like it had dropped into my stomach. I explained this to my boyfriend's brother. He advised me to call the police immediately, which is what we did. They did an investigation on the teacher and found the activity on his computer. Not only that, but he had several girls' information along with pictures. Some of the girls were minors too. There was also wooden contraptions that they found in his home, in which he probably made at the shop. He probably planned to use them on these girls, or me. I was disgusted, but relieved that he was caught. I often wonder, what would have happened if the page was never discovered? Would he have kidnapped me and killed me online for these sick people? I don't know, and I don't want to know. I changed my number and moved since the incident. This just goes to show you that you can never give out your personal information to anyone. I was 15 at the time and I had come home from school on a Friday afternoon ready to relax, kick back and enjoy a short break. I had started using code about a year prior. Nothing too fancy, just basic Python, Java, HTTPS, you know, stuff like that. And I was practicing it daily. Now I had known about the dark web before this took place. I would sometimes buy weed off of it, but that was the extent of it. This particular day, however, I decided to venture further and really take a look at the dark web. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the iceberg diagram representing the internet's content. For those who do not know, the surface web contains about 10% of the internet's content while, while the deep and dark web take up about the other 90%. I was ready to see what it really held. I heard stories about what goes down on the deep web, murder, inhumane torture, CP, etc. I didn't really believe that they were all legit, so I hopped on tour and I began to see what I could dig up. I started off by going on the hidden wiki and browsing through various websites, most of which contain illegal things such as drugs, hackers, and hitmen for hire, and lots of CP. I clicked on a random forum link, which took about a, a minute to load. I wish I could remember the name of it. It was a forum where people could pick a topic that they wanted to talk about, such as politics, dealing with mental health and stuff like that. I noticed one of the topics was a pedo forum. I don't even want to go into detail about what I saw on there. There was one particular one that caught my eye. The link was in all red, while the rest were all black. It said, not for the weak, enter at your own risk. Curious as to what this was, I clicked on the link and it brought me to a chat room. I realized that nobody was saying anything in it, only sending links. This set off alarm bells in my head red flags because I had no idea what was going on in these links. This was a cluck situation. I wish I had listened to my gut feeling, which was telling me to close out while you still can. However, the ignorant, curious team took over me and I started setting up some protection for myself using the code that I had learned. I later realized that this amateur coding I did would not protect me from these advanced people with the malicious intent. I clicked on a random link and the page loaded surprisingly fast. It looked to be another chat room. I went to type hello or something, but it would not let me. I sighed and I began moving my mouse to go to the previous page when the noise went off. I had received the chat. The message said, Hello new user. I see you have found my site. Would you like to continue? I tried typing again, but I still couldn't. The next message sent chills down my back and my hands are shaking just as I'm recalling it right now. It read, No son, not the keyboard. I tried turning off my computer, but of course, nothing worked. Another message popped up saying, I guess I take that as a no. The screen suddenly changed and the video began playing. It was a black screen, but I could hear a deep voice from a man, and it said, 
Unfortunately for you, you do not have a choice. I grabbed a sticky note and I put it over the webcam. And the voice on the screen said, Ah, uh, so we're playing games now, huh? The video then began to change and I didn't realize the man was taking his hand off the camera. He was a short man, maybe about 5 foot 11. But that brought me no comfort. He held up a knife and said, Alright, name any body part. I then for the first time noticed a cloth in the corner of the room covering something up that had a foot sticking out of it, which could only be a body, what I'm assuming. I had enough. I unplugged my computer and I laid on the floor, panting for hours until I could finally get up. Honestly, that was the last time I went on the dark web, deep web, whatever you want to call it. I now suffer from anxiety. I won't touch a computer unless I have to. Just be safe out there, guys.